With no new development in fuel cycle technology, including reprocessing and recycling technology, the United States at this point has no choice but to bury 70,000 tons of nuclear waste. The Blue Ribbon Commission on America's Nuclear Future reported that the potential to fundamentally alter the waste won't be a viable solution for at least the next several decades. However, some U.S. officials are saying it was premature for the United States to commit as a matter of policy to closing the nuclear fuel cycle, considering that there are large uncertainties that exist about the commercial capability of different fuel cycles and technology options as well. On the other hand, environmentalists believe reprocessing fuel technology is one of the worst polluters of the atmosphere and it is really just a way for companies to profit at the expense of the environment. The Department of Energy actually had kept reprocessing of used nuclear fuel as an option it was looking into it since the year 2005. However, after the March 2011 disaster at Japan's Fukushima nuclear power plant, the reprocessing options were taken off the table. The U.S. became wary of recycling radioactive waste and its potential danger for reactor accidents. Join me, Susan Madaris, on this edition of Inside Out as we take a look at the future of America's fuel cycle technology. What can be done, what are the challenges, and whether or not the 70,000 tons of nuclear waste will finally find a home. All that and more on this edition. Do join us. The question of how to best deal with nuclear waste has been a matter of intense debate since the 1950s, when the first electricity generating nuclear reactors were built. Every presidential administration since Eisenhower's has touted nuclear power as integral to energy policy and decreased reliance on foreign oil. None, however, have resolved the nuclear waste problem. The impasse has not only allowed tens of thousands of tons of radioactive waste to languish in blocks of concrete, often behind chain-link fences near major cities, it has contributed to a declining nuclear industry, as California, Wisconsin, West Virginia, Oregon, and other states have imposed moratoriums against new power plants until a waste repository exists. Disasters at Fukushima, Chernobyl, and Three Mile Island have made it very difficult and expensive as well as time-consuming to build a nuclear reactor because of insurance premiums and strict regulations. The nuclear waste stalemate has also added significantly to the difficulties and expenses. What many of us are not aware of is that, more likely than not, we already live within 100 miles of a nuclear waste storage site. Either we don't know this because it's a topic less talked about, or the other way around. If you live in a state where nuclear waste is a more pressing issue like South Carolina, Washington, Nevada, places like that, uh, then you're already acquainted with this often uninvited guest. But either way, we have to put the issue of safe disposal of nuclear waste back on the table. And it should be a concern for every citizen, not just the ones in those states. And if we look closely, very few voices have dominated the debate over this critical issue during the last few decades. Only two nuclear power plants have received license to operate in the last 30 years. Uh, billions of dollars went towards planning a permanent repository for civil nuclear waste in Nevada, but President Obama scrapped it amid uh, strong local opposition uh, as like, the, the NIMBY, not my backyard crowd, uh, raised a, a big ruckus about it. And so on January 11th of this year, the Department of Energy announced a nuclear waste strategy that for the first time includes selecting and constructing at least one temporary centralized storage facility for spent nuclear fuel and other radioactive waste. Uh, the plan also includes selection and construction of at least uh, one permanent geological repository. Uh, the strategy is uh, DOE's plan to implement a year-old report by the 15-member Blue Ribbon Commission on the American Nuclear Future. The commission was created by Energy Secretary Stephen Chu in 2010 to assess radioactive waste options in light of President Barack Obama's decision to cancel construction of the Yucca Mountain Repository. 
Uh, the DOE uh, and the Commission both recommend a uh, major reform to the repository site selection process that uh, Congress established in uh, the 1980s. Uh, the modifications include uh, a phased development approach, uh, more incentives to encourage communities to uh, volunteer to be the home of a radioactive waste site, uh, and the creation of a non-government uh, organization to direct the overall radioactive waste handling process. Uh, such changes will require new legislation. Uh, several members of the Senate have, have offered to do so. However, in the House of Representatives, most Republicans, including Fred Upton, a Republican from Michigan and also chairman of the Energy and Commerce Committee, have criticized Department of Energy and the Commission for failing to restart Yoka Mountain. That choice, however, was specifically ruled out in Obama's charge to the Commission. Opton was quoted as saying, If politics are allowed to derail a project set forth in 1983, there is no reason to believe this new effort will be any more successful. He continued by adding, We have the responsibility under the law to pursue Yucca Mountain as the nation's long-term nuclear waste solution. It has been uh, reported that a group of senior senators from both parties uh, have found common ground as its members work on a bill to overhaul the U.S. nuclear waste program. Uh, word in Washington is that they'll make a priority this year. Um, I think it's uh, Senator R Rob Wyden, uh, the Oregon Democrat who heads the Senate Energy and uh, Natural Resources Commission. Uh, who said he and three other senators would produce a draft bill over the next four weeks dealing with long-term storage of nuclear materials left over from power plants and weapon programs. Now, as you know, uh, Congress has previously approved uh, Nevada's uh, Yucca Mountain as a place to bury the country's nuclear waste. Uh, but the Obama administration said it wasn't workable. There are a lot of people who say he faced a lot of pressure by uh, Nevada's politicians, including uh, Senate Majority Leader uh, Harry Reid. But even if the Senate were to pass a bill, the House has been reluctant to take up the issue without uh, movement toward opening the Yucca Mountain facility. Uh, they're fixated on that. Uh, you know, considering how important nuclear energy is to energy policies uh, laid out by politicians, one has to wonder why uh, no administration is passed uh, properly dealt with nuclear waste. And another issue many are concerned with is that this, like other concerns, is fixated in a bipartisan stalemate. Yeah, I think it's really frustrating that as a citizen there's nothing I can do and all of these politicians are just stuck in their petty ways and important environmental issues are just being completely passed over every day. Uh, sure, yeah, I think we don't pay enough attention to it, it's going to pile up and then it's going to be too big of an issue by the time we realize it, kind of like a lot of things in our society. Um, there's two sides to it. One, from a congressional standpoint in the United States, it's terrible that we're in this partisan gridlock and we're not able to get anything done. Um, you know, I wish that both sides would work together more so that we would be able to accomplish more as a, as a government, as a, as a country, instead of just totally voting with your party and not compromising at all and not trying to improve on the, circum the certain circumstances. By law, the government is responsible for taking this waste and storing it permanently deep underground. Uh, it's been collecting money through fees on electricity bills for this purpose since uh, 1983. Uh, and should have begun disposable in 1998, but it hasn't. Uh, this is partly thanks to a set of legal and technical challenges Nevada's Yucca Mountain faced. Uh, it remains half-built, a $15 billion empty hole in the ground. This just isn't a security threat. It's also jeopardizing our domestic energy production. At one point, we thought this was about to change following the damage to the Fukushima nuclear plant in Japan. I mean, the images were frightening, if you've seen them. And for many, it touched a very raw nerve to see the evacuated homes surrounding the plant, people having to leave, matters like that. Um, and the reinvigorated debate that we were all expecting to happen, it never happened. And there was always something else to, to push this story to the back of the news. Last year, it was reported that Chinese scientists have mastered the technology for reprocessing fuel from nuclear power plants. This would potentially boost their supplies of carbon-free electricity to keep the country's economy booming. 
The breakthrough will extend by many times the amount of power that can be generated from China's nuclear plants, as fertile material are recovered to be new fuel. The details of the process the Chinese scientists developed after 20 years of work are being kept secret. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's really frightening that we don't even have a recycling program and, and that international countries are much more efficient and we're kind of stuck in this routine. Um, I think it's a possibility that they could replace us, but I also think that it's something that we are keeping on the front burners, so we're trying to come up with ideas and ways to stay ahead of them. In the short run, you know, obviously the U.S. has a, an advantage because we are the leading producer of nuclear energy in the world. However, like in business, if our competitors find a way to do it better than us, cheaper, more efficiently, whatever it may be, in the long run we will lose. Uh, the technologies used in other countries are also considered industrial secrets and, and generally not shared. China has built a pilot scale uh, reprocessing plant several years ago but repeatedly postponed using it, uh, possibly because of uh, technical problems. It's believed by political analysts that they have resolved whatever issues we're delaying that, uh, so at this moment China has enough fuel now to last up to 70 years and the breakthrough could yield enough to last uh, 3,000 years. At this point we're, we're really running out of time on this issue and the clock is ticking on the problem of nuclear waste disposal. Most of these nuclear power plants have already filled their maximum storage space for radioactive waste and in less than 10 years from now almost all of these plants will have reached capacity. Uh, the dangers that come with continuing on-site storage are vast. Uh, first of all, you're exposing the public to tanks that leak, as mentioned before, and you're providing incredibly easy targets for terrorist attacks. Um, and with the threat of climate change and unpredictable weather, like we saw in Japan, the door is open for natural disasters, and those natural disasters create n national disasters out of these nuclear waste storage sites. Uh, the Yucca Mountain took over $10 billion in 30 years to build. We really don't have the time or resources to start over. Besides China, several European countries, Russia, India, and Japan already reprocess nuclear fuel, and no plutonium has ever been diverted from their reprocessing facilities. No threat of terrorists attaining the energy has actually manifested. Thanks to such recycling, France gets 80% of its electricity from nuclear energy, compared to 19% in the United States, and it has the lowest per capita carbon emissions among industrial nations. Rather than continue to store used fuel at dozens of nuclear plant sites around the United States, some politicians believe the U.S. government should lift the ban on nuclear recycling that was put in place by former President Jimmy Carter because of nuclear proliferation worries. Nuclear plants in the U.S. are more than 30 years old. Uh, you hear a lot of people looking for work in the solar industry, but uh, no one is asking about a future in the nuclear industry, and that's a big problem for the field. Uh, the loss of intellectual capital through what many are calling a, a graying workforce. I mean, yes, there are people who say the ban imposed by President Jimmy Carter should be lifted, but why not recycle used fuel that the U.S. can expand the use of uh, clean nuclear energy? Uh, if other countries can do it safely and securely, why can't the U.S.? The U.S. government started accepting responsibility for disposing of the civilian nuclear waste with the, uh, the Nuclear Waste Policy Act of 1982, the NWPA as it became known. Uh, but spent nuclear fuel continues to linger at its source in these temporary storage facilities built by the utility companies operating nuclear power plants. ABC News a year ago reported that some of these facilities are actually leaking. Um, this is bad. When it was reporting on the uncertain future of the Vermont Yankee nuclear plant, it said that it had discovered some of these to be leaking tritium, which is a highly radioactive isotope, near the Connecticut River. 37 of the nation's 104 nuclear reactors have had leaks like these reported at the Vermont Yankee Center. That's an alarming number. And even though some argue that reprocessing would reduce waste, it's not clear whether the amount of high-level waste would be reduced much, unless some other technology is used in conjunction with it. To elaborate more on reprocessing, it is a series of chemical operations that separates plutonium and uranium from other nuclear waste contained in the used or spent fuel from nuclear power reactors.
The separated plutonium can be used to fuel reactors, but also to make nuclear weapons. Now, according to uh, a recent report from the U.S. National Academy of Sciences, it will take three million years for the radioactive waste stored in the United States as of 1983 to decay to background levels. Um, so presently, the only solution is to store the waste in a place so that the environment won't be contaminated. Um, the problem with storing nuclear waste had become both political as well as technological. Storing so much waste is it's a major technological challenge. In the late 1970s, the U.S. Uh, declared a nuclear non-proliferation uh, grounds not to reprocess spent fuel from the U.S. power reactors, but instead to directly dispose of it in the deep underground geological repositories where it would remain isolated from the environment for the least tens or tens of thousands of years. While some supporters of a U.S. reprocessing program believe it would help solve the nuclear waste problem, reprocessing would not reduce the need for storage and disposal of radioactive waste. Reprocessing would make it easier for terrorists to acquire nuclear weapons uh, materials and for nations to develop nuclear weapons programs. Less than 20 pounds of plutonium is needed to make a singular nuclear weapon. If the plutonium remains bound in large, heavy, and highly radioactive spent fuel assemblies, uh, the current U.S. practice, uh, it is nearly impossible to steal. Uh, in contrast, uh, separated plutonium is uh, not highly radioactive and is stored in a, a concentrated powder form. Moreover, commercial-scale reprocessing facilities handle so much of the material that it has proven impossible to keep track of its accuracy in a timely manner, making it feasible that the theft of enough plutonium to build several bombs could go undetected for years. You have to remember the U.S. cannot simply uh, credibly persuade another country to forego a technology it's newly embraced for its own use. Although some reprocessing uh, advocates claim that uh, the new reprocessing technologies under development will be uh, a proliferation restraint, uh, they would actually be more difficult for uh, international inspectors to safeguard because it would be harder to make precise measurements uh, of the weapon usable materials during and after the processing. And uh, all reprocessing technologies are, are far more uh, proliferation proof than direct disposal. In short, the country's leaders are no closer to a safe, permanent disposal plan for nuclear waste than they were a generation ago, when nuclear power became widespread during the Cold War. If we break down the issue, the country's estimated 70,000 tons of extremely radioactive, high-level waste uranium and plutonium uh, has set in temporary storage in the 35 states since at least the 1950s. And sure, we can say we have uh, a host of problems, but if uh, an administration wants to say uh, the Yucca Mountain were a bad idea, we need a viable solution. And fast. Uh, the waste will continue to pile up as uh, the nation's 104 nuclear power plants uh, win license rewards from federal regula regulations. It's expected to reach over 150,000 tons by 2055. According to Rod McCollum, a waste expert at the Power Industries Nuclear Energy Institute, commercial nuclear waste, which is solid, is stored in deep pools of water at many power plants. Some of it also is stored in huge steel and concrete containers called dry casks, which cost about $1 million a piece. According to a recent essay published on LotsOfEssays.com, although the nuclear waste storage problem has not yet reached crisis proportions, it is a chronic, complex issue that defies social consensus, even within the scientific community. Each category of nuclear waste, high-level, low-level, and transuric, known as TRU, presents unique challenges for containment. All are potentially dangerous. At issue is the selection of the best option for long-term storage. The essay continues by noting that, quote, high-level nuclear waste is comprised of spent fuel from private sector and military reactors, as well as the liquids remaining from fuel processed for atomic weaponry. In, in the absence of high-level waste repositories, nuclear power plants generally store their spent fuel rods in lead-lined concrete pools of water, things of that sort. 
Uh, these pools somewhat contain the spread of gamma radiation uh, by keeping these rods relatively cool, and they also help prevent fission. Uh, however, the average commercial power plant puts 60 used assemblies into temporary storage each year. And it's, they're probably going to continue to do so until at least the year 2020 when this responsibility has been transferred to the Department of Energy. Um, space is running out, and uh, these plants have the option of storing their spent fuel at other sites still under construction, and it's theoretically it's possible to reduce the amount of storage space that these rods require um, by removing them from their assemblies. You can bundle them tightly, uh, pack them into heavily shielded dry storage, um, but repacking these highly radioactive rods possibly presents too high of a danger. Used reactor fuel is considered intensely hot and irradiated. High-level nuclear wastes have long half-lives and are considered permanent hazards. Half-life describes the amount of time required for 50% of a reactor's fuel's original radioactivity to decay. High-level nuclear waste depositories must be guarded indefinitely and require deep storage. The U.S. Department of Energy is the federal agency responsible for the disposal of high-level nuclear waste. It's also safe to note that irradiated uranium fuel is widespread among use in commercial nuclear power plants and is considered to be the most dangerous radioactive waste on Earth. In the United States, commercial nuclear power plants are major producers of radioactivity. Yeah, absolutely. It's really frightening. You know, it's, it's every day we're continuing to make all of this waste and all of this waste and there's nowhere to put it. I don't know, it's just scary to think of where it's going to go from here. Um, honestly, I did not know that we had 70,000 tons of nuclear waste that we don't know what to do with or where to bury. Uh, if that's true, I think that's, that's a pretty big issue. Uh, it has not been in the public uh, realm, or I'm just not, not reading the right magazines, I guess. Um, but, you know, I really don't know what we do, how we get rid of our nuclear power today. Um, you know, I've been, to, I've been to Beijing, I've been to China, I've seen the pollution that's affected it. Um, you know, in Beijing I, I went, I was over there, and I went running one day, and I felt like I'd smoked a pack of cigarettes because the, the pollution was so bad from a lot of their factories. And I know that they're trying to deal with that, and I'm not sure that's directly related to nuclear power, but, I mean, that is a big issue, I think. And, you know, I hope, I hope that we'll, we're able to find a, a place to bury it or a way to dispose of it well or to recycle it. So it's yet to be seen whether or not the 70,000 tons of nuclear waste will ultimately find a permanent home before it's too late, whether it's at the Yucca Mountain or elsewhere here in the United States. Whichever one, whichever case, it will be time consuming and costly. That's for sure and that's what we know. That's all the time we have for this edition of Inside Out. Thanks so much for staying with us and watching. Remember, you can always send me your emails to insideout at susanmodaris.com. I'm always looking forward to them. You can also follow me on Twitter, as always, for latest updates and discussions. Until next week in another show from all of us here in New York City, goodbye.